Hello, my name is Christopher Brown. I'm a historical interpreter at Historic Richmond Town. Now, due to the coronavirus pandemic, at the moment we are not open on site. But that doesn't mean that we won't be bringing you the same workshops that we all enjoy. Today we're going to be making some paper lanterns. Now from afar, this probably just looks like a folded up piece of paper with a little handle on it. Au contraire, I now say to you, because if I bring this up closer, you can easily see that there are punches made into there with little designs. See, so just like that. That's a nice little sun over there. First, a little bit of history. We're basing these paper lanterns off of punched tin lanterns. Of course, punched tin lanterns, they were made out of a metal called tin plate. That is, thin sheets of iron coated over with a metal called tin. Punched tin lanterns were used quite a lot for many centuries. Now, when making a punched tin lantern, you would need a sheet of tin and a metal punch and a mallet. So you would set your tin down, draw out a pattern on it uh, with a scratch all, and uh, then you would take the punch, set it down on all those places, and using the mallet, hit it down, strike into it, and create the holes all around it, creating all different patterns. These punch tin lanterns were extremely useful because you could bring them out even in the heaviest of wind and rainstorms, and they would not blow out. The points that were pushed outwards so that opened up, they were on the outside, not the inside. Therefore, when wind or rain hits it, it disperses to the sides of it and therefore pushes away from these holes. So no matter if it's water from the rain coming into it or whether it's wind blowing against it, the only way that you can blow out a punched tin lantern is by opening up the little door in the front and blowing out the candle yourself. So it was a wonderful invention of the time. We are going to be making something today out of paper. And we're going to be making our lovely paper punched lanterns. So now if you're going to do this, we're going to need a few things. And uh, if you're smaller, then you should have a parent's supervision or a adult supervision. So you'll need a pair of scissors, a nice ruler, a pen to draw out your lines to cut, a glue stick, at least four sheets of felt, one on top of the other, a 10 inch by six inch rectangle, a 12 inch by one inch uh, rectangle here. This is going to be the handle. I cut this out of a newspaper. They're easier to cut out of and pieces of paper, printing paper, usually isn't uh, as long as we need it to be for this. And finally, for a bottom, you're going to need a triangle. Now this triangle is six inches long and four and a half inches tall. And this is going to fold up on all the sides and will become the bottom to our piece. A punch, this is a little bamboo skewer. You can find these uh, usually for making shish kebabs. And finally, a little tea light. And with this, you can turn it on like that. And it acts in the same way as uh, a candle would have in the old days. Of course, don't light any real candles inside of these because fire will burn through paper. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take all of your pieces of felt, put them one on top of the other, flatten it down. Then you take your large rectangular sheet of paper and lay it on top of it. Next, you take your skewer and what you're going to do is using the pointy end, punch holes through here, making whatever sort of patterns and designs you so fit uh, to like. Now, remember when you punch these in, Leave about a half an inch on either side because we're going to glue this together. Ooh, we're going to glue it together like this. And that way, once it's glued over, none of your artwork can be taken away. So if you accidentally punched a nice little design on the sides, that would have had to get glued over. We don't want any of your designs to be that way. And so keep about a half an inch uh, distance from the edges. 
So now we're going to start to punching. Alright everybody, now we've punched our designs onto it, so now what we're going to do is the side that you've just punched down on, so if you feel it, it should be quite flat versus the side that you've punched through, now that should be a bit coarse. Fold in the sides, one on the other, so that the coarser side is on the outside, just like the originals would have been. Now find that space, should be nice and even down it, and then once you have, once you know where that should be, take a glue stick, just like this one, and put a little line of glue down it, that way the piece will be glued together and can't come apart. Da -da 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 -da. Just like that. And now we fold in. And of course, just hold it down for a few seconds just at the blue sets. All right. Now we have the first bit. But we're not over by the slightest. No, we still have to do a few things. Now first, if you've already cut out your triangle, good job. If you haven't yet, go to that now because that's the next part that we're going to be doing. So pause the video now and join back in when you're ready uh, for the bottom. Now for everyone who is, we're going to take it and see if we can center your lantern right on top of the triangle. Because what we're going to do is we're going to be using the points of the triangle and gluing them onto the body of our little lantern. So we're going to take that glue stick once again and run it all along one of the points. Don't do all of them at once, otherwise the glue will dry and you'll just have to glue it all over again. So we find our center. I put my hand in here to sort of keep it in one place. And just hold down a couple seconds. And once you feel that the glue has set on there, you can move on to the next one. Right. So now, once again, glue stick. Yeah, push it up a little bit. And glue yet another side. And gluing, gluing. Fun times. And so now we're going to set it back down and once more another side goes up and once again same as before just hold it down for a few seconds until you believe the glue has set and once it has we can move on to the last point of the bottom All right. that should do nicely and now the final one so one last time Glue stick all around it, and up it goes. You can also do this with glue tacks. You can set it on them and then just hold it down. But you can use a glue stick for this, you could use Elmer's glue, you could use basically any type of glue for this will work. Now, of course, we're not done just yet. We still have to put on a handle to it. And so, we're going to take our little long strip of paper 
And put it down here. Let's see now. All right. That'll be about where the handle should be. And so, yes. Glue the uh, end, one end part, and then the other end part, uh, end part, but on the same side as each other. And these you can glue at the exact same time because they'll be put on at the exact same time. It's also easier to hold down. All right. So now we're going to set that in here and then in here. And same as before, just hold it down for a few seconds until the glue has set. Right. I'll just straighten out my own piece here. All right. Now, oh, a bit of my glue is coming. There we go. Flattening out the bottom. Excellent. And there we have a lovely paper lantern, all punched with lovely designs. I'll show you mine. I've made a little house, a pineapple, and I love doing suns, so there's another sun. Now, you mentioned, I said before, to have a tea light on hand. Well, let's switch it on. I'm going to carefully place it down inside of the paper lantern. Now, you can see it's lit up a little bit. Now, when it gets very dark, you'll be able to see that the light will shine through the holes here and light up your entire lantern with all the different designs that you've punched through. It looks very, very nice. There we go. Well, I do hope you've enjoyed this arts and culture in quarantine, and I do hope that you enjoy your paper lantern making. Make as many as you like. They're terrific fun. You can be as artistic as you like with them. There is no limit to artistic genius with these. Well, thank you for coming along, and thank you for listening in and making some lovely bits of art. My name is Christopher Brown, and I do hope to see you all again for another Arts and Culture in Quarantine. Have a wonderful day.